an example of filling in a genetic cross diagram. So the question here states that in ring neck parakeets, the green feather color represented by capital G is dominant over blue color feathers, which is a small letter G to represent the recessive allele. So we asked to use a genetic cross to show the possible offspring when a heterozygous male is paired with a blue colored female. Okay, so we'll start off with the cross. Remember that the format of the cross would already give you a few marks there. So initially we're gonna have the P1 phenotype and genotype, the parental phenotype and genotype. So if you look at the information given to us in the example here, it's telling us that uh, we are showing a cross between a heterozygous male, right? So heterozygous, we know that hetero means different, homo means the same, and it refers to the genotype. So the male's genotype would have different alleles, meaning you'll have a capital G being paired with a small g. So you've got a green as well as a blue allele then it's paired with a blue female. Blue is a physical appearance, which would be the phenotype of the female. So we'll write this on the side that this one is blue. So here in this case, for the male, we are using the left-hand side and the female would be using the right-hand side. Now, the female, it's given in the information that she's blue colored and the male is heterozygous. Now being heterozygous, it's got the green and the blue allele. We know that green is dominant over blue and by Mendel's law of dominance, it would mean that the phenotype would only show a green color because green is the dominant color. And for the female being blue, we know that the allele being used is a small letter G as given in the information above. But the only way to have a recessive phenotype would be to be homozygous recessive, being two small letter Gs. Thereafter, the process of meiosis needs to occur in both the male and female, which results in the formation of gametes. And the gametes would simply separate those genotypes. So we'll take the alleles and separate, put the capital G on one side. You have a semicolon to show that separation a space and the small g. For the female, you'd separate those small g alleles. And that, as we said, is Mendel's law of segregation, where we separated the genotypes. And then for fertilization, you could draw a Punnett square here. And then we'd put two of the alleles for the alleles from the one parent this time it's the male on the left hand side we put those alleles the capital g and the small g on the one side of the Punnett square and then the alleles of the other parent which is the female here it's a small g and a small g and then we have to show the process of fertilization. Fertilization would be the joining of the gametes. So on the one side, we've got these, which would be representing the sperm cells. And obviously we know that sperm cells cannot fuse with each other. You need a sperm cell to join with an ovum. All right, so here we're gonna have, it's possible for this sperm cell with the capital G, the green allele, to join with this allele for blue or with this other one, which is also blue. So there was the only option was for it to join with a blue allele from the female, or we could have had the other sperm, which the other 50% would be having the blue allele from the father, the recessive one, which was hidden in the phenotype, but it is there in the genotype being heterozygous. And it would join with the female from above with the small letter G, which is blue alleles homozygous. The next step is now, what are the ratios of the genotypes? So here, what you do is to say, okay, we've got one option is capital G and small g. So that capital G and small g is a heterozygous individual. How many of them do we have? We've got one here and another one here. So there's two heterozygous offspring and homozygous recessive. 
small letter G, small letter G, which is two blue alleles, there's one, two possible offspring by that. So two out of four, we had heterozygous and two out of four being homozygous recessive. Now, when you have a ratio with even numbers, you'd always simplify it. So two is to two, the number two goes into two one time. And on the other side, two goes into two one time also. And you get one heterozygous is to one homozygous recessive. From there, we'd want to fill in the phenotypes. So what are the colors of the offspring? Okay, so we know that small g and small g, given in the information, small g is for blue. These would be blue offspring. This would also be blue. Above here, this would be green. And this one would also be green. So if we count here, we've got two green offspring in the F1 is to two blue colored offspring. And then again, we simplify the ratio so that you say that the ratio of the phenotype is one green is to one blue. And that would be a completed genetic cross. Just for the format, having the P1 and F1 in the correct position, the meiosis, gametes, and fertilization in the correct positions, you should get two marks already before that. And a cross like this here could be approximately six to seven marks in an exam situation.